All right, and my apologies to our audience, especially to Amy Douglas. You know that we we're trying to cue you up for the interview segment there, but uh, we have all new studios and new equipment here, and I'm not working the the telephone lines as good as I should. <laughs> you know what? I have a I have a tendency to make people nervous. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, so we got TV cameras here too. So when you come come up next time, uh, it's broadcasting all over the TV sets around. It's based out of a university here. Oh, fabulous! And also uh, online, uh, there's plans to Tell do that. Tell that university we'd love to come and play yeah. directly to them. That's right. And um, you, you're going to be about an hour away from the studios here on Saturday night yep. in uh, Hartford, Connecticut. But you, you, you have some ties and some people, you musicians here. Actually, I was, I was going to say that. Um, ironically, the, the great state of Connecticut is, is responsible for some really happening groups. Um, and I do know a couple of musicians from Connecticut. Most notably, I know some musicians who um, were in Deep Banana Blackout. Um, actually, I... At one point, knew knew well. I knew, I kind. It's weird. I kind of knew them like in some formation. Um, it's it, it, it's strange, but I do know. In in uh, they were they're an amazing band. Well, just first first and foremost, um, I know Jen Durkin, who is a great singer. You know, amazing. You know that girl's got some of the scariest set of lungs I've ever heard, and she's a great performer. And hopefully I'll, I'll run into her sometime. It seems like we're playing in a lot of the same venues. Right, right. So I'd love to, you know, I'd love to holler at her. Um, I know Fuzz, and Fuzz is ridiculous. Um, Fuzz is an amazing guitarist and a brainiac songwriter. And I feel, I will, I will, I will just say this, I feel that our time together was cut very short. Um, and I'd love to reach out to Fuzz again because, you know, Fuzz and I had 50 million songs we could have written. So, so Fuzz, if you're out there listening, I know we're down, Fuzz, down the road. man, <laughs> I always knew I'd be out your way. <laughs> Give us a holler or, you know, <laughs> come down to the studio and get Fuzz in contact a, with Fuzz is a great guy. I, I know him. Um, who else do I know? Uh, you were talking about The Grapes, right? Oh, yeah. I did a show with The Grapes. Um, okay. The Grapes of Audfilly and Fantasy, and I performed at a little club that was under renovation. This is funny. Where was that? We were at the Triad. It's on 72nd Street, the Triad Theater. And we were, we were both supposed to play upstairs. And because they decided to renovate it the week we were booked, we had to wind up playing in the section of the Triad where they would normally only have like a little jazz combo. Oh, my God. There is no such animal stronger than the word tight squeeze. And the poor grapes have what, like, you know, an entire tribe of Africa on stage with them. You know, I mean, they got like ten musicians up there, like a bongo player and a kazoo player and whatever. I thought they were all just—they were so sandwiched in, and I felt so terrible. But they were great. And Mystic Bowie came down. Hi, Mystic. Mystic Bowie came down and sang with them, so I got to meet Mystic that night. Um, we were on. We were on before them, and it was great. You know, I mean, it was a great weekend. It was Labor Day weekend. Oh, okay. So it was pretty recent, right? It was Labor Day weekend yeah. of, of 2002. But yeah, I know some Connecticut musicians, ironically. Um, Connecticut's got some, some happen. Oh, I know a cat named Jeff Carlson, who actually used to play guitar with us. Mm-hmm. He's a great guitarist. He's, um, he's out of Hartford. He's a nice guy. He's a very cool guy. So you've also got uh, Jimmy Seaside and Stanford yeah, lined we, up. Yeah, we're March playing 5th. at Jimmy Seaside. I've never played there either. <laughs> like most of the venues that are on our roster, in fact, I just got some new dates in today mm-hmm. that I want that I, that are very exciting. Um, no, most no. Of, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Most of the venues that we're playing at now, like we played a gig at Murray's Inn mm-hmm. on um, last Saturday night. In Wilkesbury. In Wilkesbury, okay. yeah. Oh, that's funny. You want to hear funny? If if you really want to laugh. We we're like I said, we're from New York, and I know that a lot of people are gonna be like, "Big deal?" No, not big deal. When you're from Queens and Brooklyn, y- you pronounce things wrong, and then even when people tell you the right way to pronounce them, you're pigheaded. You're gonna pronounce it wrong because that's your way to do it. The name of the town is is, is pronounced Wilkesbury. It was founded by two people. We had no idea. You know, what we were walking around calling it Wilkes Bar. Okay. So we get off. You know, we get out of we get out of our rig and we go and, and an amazing guy. 
Murray's Inn is a nice place, and they gave us a lot of love, and it's a nice place to play. And poor Tom had a horrible head cold, <laughs> which we hope he is feeling much better. He's a sweetheart. And we had a good time. That was the first time we ever played there. All of these are like the first time we ever played there. We can. It's not the first time we've ever played at Tobacco Road. Tobacco, this will be, you know, I don't know, like the fourth or fifth time we played there. It's, it's a, that's like our favorite place to play in New York. That is absolutely a great place. Well, what makes it the sound or the people or management? The vibe. Or, yeah, the, just vibe. the vibe. Yeah. The vibe at Tobacco Road. Well, this is the thing. I mean, being, and I was going to say, like I was saying before, that we were, we're kind of an urban band. We're urban, and it kind of gives us leeway to perform at different types of venues. Like, we perform there, but we'll also perform at, like, the Brooklyn Academy of Music. Or we'll get down on, like, some hip-hop show. Mm -hmm. Like, we've played in Harlem, you know, done, like, little hip-hop shows. And, like, we're, we're totally down with doing that. We, we believe that, you know, urban music and urban rock and all of that, it's intertwined. You know, it, it, it connects you. So we'll we'll play anywhere that'll give us a freaking stage at this point, um, and we're we're down with doing that. But with Tobacco Road, and I think that's how we got connected to some of these other venues through kind of what people call this this jam band kind of a thing, which is ironic because we're we're not a jam band, we're a pop band, and it's it's, and I think that was probably what was attractive to a lot of these venues where we're playing. Is, is that the thing about Tobacco Road that makes it so great is the vibe. It's just, it's a lot like Murray's. It, it's kind of got that relaxed atmosphere. People are there to hear music. People, this is the problem with New York City. New York City's venues downtown, a lot of them cater to one sound, which is like an indie rock sound. You know, if you play anything that isn't kind of indie rock, there's not much home for you downtown. Mm -hmm. And most of the music venues are downtown. And even though we play a lot downtown, like we, we're going to be playing at SOBs and we're going to be playing, where else do we play downtown? We play a lot downtown in the city. And it's cool. And we love doing that. Um, we've, we ha I can tell you that in the past we've done like New York and Poets Cafe. I mean, we, we, we're fine with it. But we're not an indie rock band. We don't have that, you know, the Strokes or the Vines or the Hives or the White Stripes, whatever hipster rock, you know, thing that they got going on down there. We played at Don Hills, you know, but we don't, we don't really do that indie rock thing. The thing about Tobacco Road is it kind of reminds me of, like, the kind of place you maybe have gone to see bands in the 60s and 70s. It's got that real hippie, crunchy thing going on. They got a dog that just like walks around <laughs> the club. It's it's cool. I mean, we really like it there, and also we love we like we like the guys who run that place. We love Dave and Damien and the girls in THG, Juliet and Casey. God bless their hearts. So, how about uh, traveling as a band? How uh, a road trip with the band. How does that go? What do you guys listen to uh, driving around? Ah, you ask the good questions, Joe. You yeah. ask the questions that musicians would want to know. Right, right. I love that about you already. Well, actually, I can tell you exactly what we've been listening I will give you the entire breakdown of what we listened to on our last two road trips. Okay. Listening to a lot of Fela right now. Um, if, if I don't know how... Are you familiar with Fela? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fela is, for all those who are not familiar with him, another one of those who were anointed by God. He is the sexiest man alive and one of the greatest musicians. Well, he, he was one of the sexiest men alive. He's unfortunately deceased. But You're going to make Jimmy Page jealous. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Jimmy, you, you, remember, I, I can't sleep with the ones anointed by God. Right, right. Anointed by God. <laughs> Jimmy is pretty close to anointed by God, but he has enough of a humane... He also might have been a little anointed by Satan. So, I mean, so the wickedness of Jimmy Page makes him okay to have sex with. Jimmy Page is, oh, please. I could go on a diatribe about Jimmy Page, but I want to tell you what we've been listening to on our, on our road trips. A lot of Fela. Afrobeat is great for musicians to get into. If you're not into Afrobeat, get into it any way you can, because Afrobeat is all about layers, and it's all about arrangements, and it's all about modality. And it's all about rhythm, and those are, and it's also just about 
not so much improvisation, but the concept that you can just lock into a mode. If, you're, if you play funk of any kind, mm-hmm. you should be having a steady diet of Afrobeat. These people would jam on the one and drive it into your subconscious. I mean, if it weren't for Afrobeat music, you know, you could never have a Parliament Funkadelic or James Brown. So go to the mother source and listen to it. It's, it's really important. Fela, Antibas. Um, any Afrobeat, but Fela in particular had a great voice. You know, he was an extremely radical guy. He made Bob Marley look like Martin Luther King. This guy was the deal. <laughs> you know, he was like, getting beaten every day and going to jail. Um, we've been listening to him a lot. We've been listening to some, some hip hop. I mean, we've been listening. Who've been listening to The Roots? Um, who've been listening? We also we always kind of pull out some Tribe Called Quest. Uh-huh. Listening to I heard, oh, I heard they might be getting back together. I know. Yeah, oh, if right. they get back together, I will be front row with my shirt off. I'd be so excited. I, I just I love Tribe Called Quest. They are the they are the they are the real reason I started to buy hip hop records instead of singles. They are them and Public Enemy mm-hmm. um, were, were the reasons. But Tribe Tribe made hip hop music exactly what I just said. Music. They were creating their own language of music. So, you know, hip-hop needs to go back and do that again. I, I listen to very little recent hip-hop. I mm-hmm. think it's kind of crap now. It's become commodity. It's not about music anymore. It's not about message anymore. Okay, so we're going to flash back to your commentary on the Soul Train. How about today, Soul Train? You ever catch it? Ugh. <laughs> I wasn't done telling you what we've been listening to on our oh, road okay. trips. Oh, okay. Sorry. And that's that. way more interesting yeah. than today's whole Right, thing. right. That's true. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, no, I'm but going. what else have you been listening to? Um, the Beatles. Steady okay. diets of the Beatles. Um, steady. Essentially, we've been listening to, like, Fela, the Beatles, Hendrix, hip-hop. Oh, um, we sometimes we listen to straight-up blues. I mean, we listen to, like, Elmore James or um, Howlin' Wolf for Muddy Waters. And... When we feel the need, sometimes we just put on some Billie Holiday. I mean, we we keep it pretty much at those levels. Ironically, when we're traveling, we don't crank the music real loud. Probably because when we get on stage, we crank the music real loud. Uh-huh. When we get off stage, we want to change the vibe. You know, and I think changing the vibe keeps you healthy. But as today's Soul Train, I mean... Oh. Just isn't happening. I, at least I'm not feeling it, but... But the problem is, I'm. Uh, this this is going to come off like the statement that's going to have people like threaten to bomb your radio station. But I'm a revolutionary, so I'll take that chance. Black music overall today. I'm not saying that all black music, but particularly R&B music today, is really just. I don't know. Subpar to be nice. <laughs> um. It's not R&B music that I remember. Right, right. Or more importantly, I'll tell you what really angers me. you got some really talented artists right now that I just hope dominate the world right now. Like, I mean, I really love Jill Scott. I think she rocks. I love her. She's incredible. And I like Indyari, and I like Erica Badu. I mean, I like a lot of artists out there right now. What the hell is this term, neo-soul? Oh, my God. That is horrible. Why can't we just say soul music? It's soul music. Right, right. The fact what the fact that what it's so many years later makes it a neo. When did soul music stop? Soul music never should have stopped. Right. Kind of kind of pins D'Angelo into like a corner on what he's got to sound like on every record. I guess. I love yeah. D'Angelo. Yeah. That's another man. Now that's another man I would like to have sex with. I'm sorry to admit it on air, but D'Angelo is fine. Oh, he's gorgeous. How about, um, you know, I, I noticed some of the, the music. You ha- also, we should mention the, the live CD. Yeah. Which is, which is available. And that, that's and that was nice recorded well. at Tobacco Road. Oh, that's right. Okay. That Got it right here. That was recorded. Back uh, July 31st. July 31st. And that the, was, I think, believe it or not, that was the first of the second time we ever played there. And we knew it would not be the last. So, so one of my favorite songs you included on there was uh, Hair by uh, Graham Central Station. Uh, Larry was a guest um, about a year ago. Oh, my show. God. Yeah. I, wa- I wanted to say that. Larry Graham is God. Larry Graham is a godly, godly, godly man. And if it were not for Larry Graham, nobody would be slapping on that bass. Right, nobody right. would be thumping on it. 
And if somebody thumped before Larry, he did not make himself known to me. Larry Graham changed the way people play electric bass. So you, you, I, be on a radio I, show where you had him as a guest, I feel indubitably honored. No, no, you're, you're, you're in the same, same company, so um, I'm glad to have you both on. Thank but you. i, I got to tell you something really quickly interesting about what Larry said. I asked him, does he practice the bass every day? And he said, uh, he actually said this, he said, when you create your own style, you don't have to practice it, which... I don't know. I guess the the style of, you know, plucking the bass and stuff like that. I, I definitely think that there's, well, I, I think I, let me put you this way. I don't know if I, I think I knew what he, I think I know what he meant by that. I think that, like, for example, somebody asked me, do you practice singing every day? And I usually answer, I kind of walk around and holler a few things. Uh -huh. But I don't necessarily, like, stand there every day in a mirror and sing my songs. Uh, what I do every day is try to write something. I sit down at my piano and I, I'm a piano player. That's me playing keys. On right, that that's right. Um, so I don't always play on stage. I kind of, kind of share that duty with Mark Forbes, who is a phenomenal keyboard player. And I kind of get, you know, I get by. <laughs> but I mean, this guy's like blazing solos. So, so actually singing while you're playing piano, um, what's what goes through in what, your mind and what actually happens when you're doing that? Instead of just, you know, standing up and my... kicking it out. Right. When you're standing up and kicking it out, this is, this is a funny thing. When you're standing up and kicking it out, there is nothing between you and the audience. So if you can't reach them with your performing skills, you're dead weight. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's way more ballsy and way more existential to stand out in front and kick it out. I always feel like when I'm sitting behind the keyboards and singing, there's a protective layer around me. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's uh -huh. like, well, I'm kind of hiding here now. So if my pants have been fitting too tight through this whole show, I can sit down now and not think about it for a minute. I'm just kidding. Um, actually, it's, it's a different mode for me. I mean, when I'm playing and singing, I feel like I'm communicating maybe the song a little harder, mm -hmm. um, especially considering that I was sitting there singing it and playing it as I wrote it. So it's a more compositional kind of an aspect towards what I'm trying to get across maybe to an audience um, until you ask me to take a piano solo. <laughs> and then I'm like, God help me, I just want to get through this solo. Mark could do this so much better than I can. Why did I agree to sing this and play this? Oh, darn you and drat you, Mark. That's what I'm usually thinking. But um, I enjoy both. I, I think that actually... Um, Somebody recently came to a show and put it best, and they said that when we have the money for a really big stage show, they can see me evolving into kind of like a funky Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the greatest compliment right. anybody oh, yeah. ever gave me because Freddie is another godly one, isn't he, with his astonishing voice and musicianship, right. and, he could sure. and he could play that piano. And that was what you went to see Queen to do. Like, sometimes he'd be sitting down and being, like, maestro behind the piano and being, like, Mozart, you know? And then he'd get on stage and he'd kick it out. I mean, he could kick it out. Oh, I love Freddie. Oh, I miss him so badly. That was a great loss. One so, of many. So if you just tuned in, Amy Douglas from Adatus, uh, which is uh, abbreviation for Amy Douglas and the Industry Standard. Standard. And uh, we should give our listeners, oh, we should let them know that this interview will be airing uh, within the next couple of weeks for three nights, three days, three nights on the other outlet I have, a 24-hour station. So if you want to get in touch and get the press release and everything for that, you can email me at eastwestdj at aol.com. So we'll, if you missed out, dig in the interview and the music, you, you can uh, listen again uh, at your convenience. Uh, Sully's this Saturday night, Hartford, Connecticut, 2053 Park Street. Showtime, 10.30 p.m. Get there early. Bring some extra money for the CDs, which I'm, I'm sure you'll be selling there, right? Oh, my goodness, yes. Right. Whatever left we have. Right, that's right. <laughs> no, number no, one song on GarageBand.com. Buy CDs, buy CDs. The more you buy, the more we can make. Right. Hey, that, that sums it up right there. So how far is the drive from New York City to Hartford? What are you figuring, like two like hours? two hours. Yeah, two hours, yeah. Oh, please, if it isn't long, we don't do it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but we, no, seriously, I mean, I, I, I know pretty soon we're going to be playing in, in, in Burlington, Vermont. That's far. Right. 
Well, my wife's from Montreal, so I'm used to the long drive. So Wow, that's like five and a half hours. Right, that's yeah. Intense. We're not coming home that night. <laughs> yeah, right. I will not. That's the problem is that when you drive two hours, then you play the show, then you're getting out really. And then yeah. you got to find your way home. <laughs> yeah. That's but I will, say, I will say this. Finding your way to Hartford, Connecticut, mm-hmm. is a lot simpler than finding your way to Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Not... Is, isn't it Wilkes Bar? <laughs> you got me there. No, I'm just kidding with you. You got me there, right. Joe. You got me. And uh, all this information's available on the new website. www.adatismusic.com. Right. And you could sign up for the mailing list there and check out. Sign the up for the mailing list. Check it all out. Check it all out. Yeah. We just we got to get some new. My hair is a lot longer. We got to get some new pictures. <laughs> Very soon. They're yeah, coming. Because you're revamping everything, right? We got, well, we got to, like, hit it back with a hot, sexy new website, you know? Uh, it's, got, it's got all the info. Great picture of you there and, and the band. And, hey, you got the grapes up there. Grapes is a link. I see grapes. The grapes is a link. Yeah, right. The grapes is a link. I, admittedly, um, and I was saying this, I have not seen them with their new vocalist, right. Tara, but I, I did see them with Reese, and they were fantastic then. I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure Tara's a great singer. So are you looking this summer to play some of those festivals, or are you just going to... Yeah. yeah, I mean, we'd love to. Mm-hmm. I mean, anybody who can help us. Right. That, that was, we'd love to. And Fuzz, Amy Douglas, you got to connect again. Oh, it's man, I, I would just love to say hello to him. Right, right. You know, just, that would be great. I'd love to just say hi. He's a great guitarist. So, Amy, I got to really thank you for for stopping by. I know you've been a little under the weather from from traveling. Yes, yeah. I, I I actually did this entire interview laying in a bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, for some, I don't know what happened. Like, and it's not just me. Like two other members of the band, like all the same thing. We're running fevers, but we have no other symptoms. It's like I'm just suddenly we just ran a fever. Right. I don't know how that happened. That's freaky. Well. Just get well. You got two big shows Thursday night at one of your favorite venues. Yeah, Tobacco, Tobacco Road. Road. That's going to be uh, awesome. Peter Prince and the Trauma Unit. What what kind of music do they play? I have no idea. I've okay. never heard them. I mean, <laughs> but I but I have I've actually uh, I've heard of the name, so I know they're they're out actually, there. Actually, so. I think Eric Kalb from Deep Banana is playing with them. Oh, okay. I think what it is is it's members of Moon Boot Lover and um, and DBB. Oh, I got gotcha. Mixed together with this guy Peter Prince. Oh, um, okay. I'm sure it's good. I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to to experience it. Right. Again. Yeah, Eric Kalb, he he's got like a radio voice. He was on the the, the interview here a couple of years ago. So, I yeah, I did not have enough time with Eric. I I met him very briefly. Right. So uh, this Thursday night, February thirteenth, Tobacco Road, Adatus, Amy Douglas, and the Industry Standard. And then uh, just an hour away from where we broadcast here in Fairfield, Connecticut, uh, up in Hartford, Sully's Pub, and uh, you'll be bringing all the originals. And, and when you do um, some covers, what, what do you uh, put in there? Oh, man. And this is funny. This is, this is what's funny about reforming a band under duress. Or worse still, trying to reform a band under a schedule that's already been locked down is you don't have enough time to write new material. Mm-hmm. And you're brushing up new members on the old ones. So what do you do? You you put covers in there. We do Trampled Underfoot by Led Zeppelin. We do um, we do an interesting thing with Rock Steady by Aretha Franklin. We oh, do, okay. we, we we really push that one out. Um, God, what other covers do we do? We've done a few. Um, I know that we want to actually, and some of these covers we want to keep in our set regardless. Mm-hmm. Like when we have like two hour sets, we still want to keep Trampled Underfoot in there because we just think, you know, that if Jimmy Page should ever walk through the door, you know, preferably with Mr. Plant, um, you know, he, he could hear something he could be impressed by. We're so influenced by Zeppelin, everyone in the band. Um, we, I can tell you covers we, we have done. Let's see. We've done um, If Six Was Nine, Jimi Hendrix. Okay. Um, I know that we're working on a really slammed version right now that I think we're going to keep um, A Voyage to Atlantis by the Isley Brothers. I love the Isley Brothers. So you got Brothers. some great taste. And, you know, well, this is the thing. If, oh, uh, we, we do this thing sometimes where we do Slipping in the Darkness by War and we... Imp- Whoa, hang on just one second. Okay. So you're in tune to WVOF 88.5 in Fairfield, Connecticut, 
and it is six o'clock. And this is the upper room with Joe. Sorry, sorry about that, Jeff. Oh, that's okay. I got I got the station ID right on top of the hour, so it was meant to happen. Oh, great. Um, what was I saying? Oh, it's six or nine, boys to Atlantis. Um, golly, we, we've done a lot of covers in our time. I mean, we we're not afraid to throw them in, but the the, the trick is, don't play a stupid cover. Right. Like, don't play a cover that everybody would expect a funky band to play. So, so yeah, I mean, you have great original music, so that that's great that, you know, you're out there doing well, that's, your Well, that is the thing. I, yeah. think, I think that by March, and this is good because we're coming into, I thought we were going to be doing, like, another, you know, I thought we were going to be calming down, and it seems that the schedule is picking up, so golly gee whiz. Um, <laughs> we have to start writing some music. Um, but we have been writing. We've been writing on the trips, and what's coming out of us is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, the songs that are coming out of us are just phenomenal. So I think by the end of March, audiences are going to be treated to some really heavy new music that they're going to get into. And you got to make it here with the band. And, you know, we have bands play here live all the time in, on the show here. So, yeah, oh, you're welcome to do that. Well, we definitely, we'd love to get on every festival, every opportunity to play anywhere. You know, we'd like to be out there. So as much as much as possible. Right. So what? Why don't we go out with uh, a bang? That's a. That's right. We'll go out with a bang from a Daddis. And how about Hit Me? Going out with Hit Me would definitely would definitely be going out with a bang. And how about something from the live CD? Oh, is I do believe there's a version of Trampled Underfoot on the live CD. Okay. Can you give me the the track number? Do you have oh, it on top of your Jesus head? Oh, Jesus Lord, no. <laughs> oh wait. Here I go. Here I go. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some homework real quick and and get it up there. Let me see. I hope it doesn't say track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, no, no. No, I'm not sure which track number it is. But yeah, the live CD is hard because yeah. the person who sequenced it was on heavy drugs at the time. Um, <laughs> the person, whoever did this, whoever taped it for us, was obviously thinking differently. Let me <laughs> let me just let me just put right. it that way. Thinking, right. think, thinking with with tainted brain. Okay. Well, what I, I'll I'll go with hair, and then um, maybe we'll get into trampled underfoot. All right. And, and of course, for the replay, uh, three days, three nights, uh, we'll be mixing on the other outlet here for the upper room. And uh, you can email me at eastwestdj at aol dot com, and uh, we'll be also playing more songs off of the two CDs from Adatus and Amy Douglas. Th thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Oh no, the pleasure was mine for real. Thank you so much for having me. And hope um, you feel better. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. You're sweet. Thank you. I really appreciate you uh, you giving me the time. So uh, we'll get into it right now. And we'll uh, go out and see Amy Douglas weather in New York City this Thursday night at Tobacco Road or Saturday night in Connecticut, Hartford, Connecticut, one hour away from here at Sully's Pub. Thanks, Amy. Thank you so much. <laughs> 